Greetings and welcome back to the Fate of Drakenheim. This is the Dungeon Dudes weekly Dungeons & Dragons 5th edition livestream campaign. My name is Monty Martin, running our game as Dungeon Master. And I'm Kelly McLaughlin, playing Sebastian Crow, the Half-Elf Shadow Sorcerer, and we're joined today by our good friends. Jill Tinnitus, playing Rudy Whitaker, the Shifter Elder Tonight. And Joel Gorman, playing Pluto Jackson, the Human Battlemaster. Thanks for joining us once again. If you're just tuning in for the first time, welcome. We're the Dungeon Dudes. Kelly and I post new videos all the time over on YouTube where we cover everything D&D and TTRPGs. So check out the channel if you want to learn more about playing the game or running the game. You can also join us on Tuesday evenings when we broadcast the campaign on Twitch. You can check us out from 6 p.m. to 8 p.m. Eastern Time at twitch.tv slash dungeon underscore dudes. You can also watch the video episodes of the show on YouTube or check us out as an audio-only podcast as well. And with that, let us find out the fate of Drakenheim. Drakenheim is no more. The devastation which fell upon that accursed place left a kingdom in ruin. Now, horrors lurking in the haze grow ever more great and terrible. While simmering tensions between rival factions boil over into outright war, the power of monarchs, mages, and priests hangs in the balance. Six unlikely heroes join forces to confront the coming chaos. They shall decide once and for all the fate of Drakenheim. Welcome back. When last we left our heroes, Rudy, Sebastian, and Paluto were charged by the king, Wilhelm, to investigate the various goings-on at Altbrook University, having traveled now from Helig. Picking up the strings of their previous investigation, our heroes have many things that they want to find out while they're here. Having now met with the headmaster of Altbrook University, they have resolved to infiltrate the school as students and faculty to find out exactly what is going on. Having been furnished with your, your false identities and legitimate actual letters of enrollment and acceptance and course schedules and invitations as guest lecturers, you've also all been given, Reginald Bond Montgomery has also seen that you can all have your own both dorm room and faculty room, but you're also, you have your own office. Ooh. And you'll be able to use the office to have private meetings with your students. So, having moved into your dorms and spent the afternoon acquainting, I figure we should find out first, what are your disguises? And what are your, and maybe recap what you're looking for and how you're going to go about this investigation. So the three of you are together in a private space. All right, I'm going to cast Seeming on us every morning. It's going to last for 16 hours. That should get us through each school day. Amazing. And um, what does everybody want to look like? I got my disguise, and I, I'm going to snap my fingers, and Sebastian's hair disappears. He's bald. Um, he has, like, a bit of scruffy facial hair, patchy, just coming in. Um, and he is wearing a bow tie, and a nice shirt and um, a sweater vest of some sort. Okay. And um, <laughs> this is the young Mortimer Bigsby. Young Mortimer okay. Bigsby. Um, and he has like a slung uh, bag over his one shoulder, filled with books. Um, all of them just say because he's he's trying his best with this disguise. The books just say science, school, math, <laughs> study. Um, on them, but they're, they're okay. slung over his back, and um, yeah, he uh, he looks. He's trying to look scholarly, but young and curious. Um, <clears throat> I think Sebastian, if you could make me look more <clears throat> frail, you know, like school teacher type, a little bit small, you know, my bulky muscles. I don't think they're gonna believe. Um, 
professor of science if I'm not. So maybe like a little, same age, I, I wanna look wise, but a little bit shorter, a little bit more frail looking, uh, but a wit about me. Um, a little bit more gray, actually. A little more gray? A little bit. I've seen things. All right. Yeah, I I do, <laughs> I do that. What are you wearing though? I I'm wearing like long. I don't know. I guess what I think are professor's robes, like um, a little bit darker, a little bit less, like more blending into the crowds of people. I want to seem like very inconspicuous in terms of the way that I look. Okay. Being around campus. So this frail, uh, frail-ish, yeah. gray-haired, but like I imagine you're still like very. Proper and... Proper, but like, a, again, a bit smaller. Like, right. I think you wouldn't expect her to be going into battle or anything right, like that. Right. Yeah. And so this is... Uh, this is Professor uh, Penelope Wellred. Okay. Oh. Yes. So Penelope or Penny. Penny. Penny Wellred, in addition to your faculty accommodations, you will also have an office as a guest lecturer in the Great Hall. So that's the main building. And so you'll you'll have an office in the bell tower because that way there's no question that students are coming there. Yeah. That's your office. It doesn't mean that they have to go to the faculty building at all. Um, so, and you have your own room in the faculty hall. Um, and so this is where you will all meet and you've taken on your identities. What about Pluto? <laughs> yes. Pluto um, is going to as the seeming spell takes over, there's gonna he's gonna have this long hair, and that's sort of like unkept that he puts up into a bun on top of his head. <laughs> um, he has sort of a stubbly growth, and he's gonna be wearing um, like a very loose fitting cotton long sleeve with like the shirt very much open, <laughs> and and revealing a lot of like his illustrious chest hair and 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 pectorals. Um, he's wearing sort of like very similar, like darker pants and sandals. Um, he carries a surfboard, which is Ignatius, and a frisbee, which is his shield of Saint Vitruvio. <laughs> he is uh, essentially like um, a, a, a hippie. And his name? His name is Jack Pluto Sun. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Okay. So the you guys want to play some ultimate frisbee or what, <laughs> Professor Penelope? What well read? As part as a guest lecturer, you will have the opportunity to deliver a guest lecture mm -hmm. um, that will be advertised for students to attend. You can decide when you want to run this lecture, and what and if you like how what kind of students you want it to be open to. What do you want your guest lecture to be called? <laughs> um, so I'm a guest lecturer. I'm from Liberio. Um, I think I want my lecture to be the impact of blood trauma on the human body. <laughs> <laughs> so Rudy would know about that. I'm super interested. <laughs> and it's, uh, open, it's an elective uh, adding to your course. So um, <laughs> any, especially like science students, but I would say like uh, anyone on sports teams wanting to understand like the impact <laughs> of um, of, uh, of trauma of or trauma. especially over repeated trauma. Right? Yeah. Exactly. Okay. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> okay. When and where you want to give that lecture is up to you, but but that information that will be the information that is disseminated that your guest lecturer from Liberia who will be delivering this lecture uh, over your time here and otherwise um, you'll be able to um, meet with faculty and audit any course that you want to attend. Oh. Our other students, the two of you have been given your class schedules for the courses that you are to attend. Mm -hmm. um, as befits uh, your education, both of you have been enrolled in, um, in the following. All right, Jack. <laughs> Jack and Morty. Jack and Mort. Do you go by Morty? Uh, you can call uh, Mort, Morty. Mortimer? Okay. Y yeah. Both of you will be attending the course Mortimer. Foundational Principles of Mortal Psychology, led by Dr. Sina Rinks. Yeah. Um, that is at the, um, that, that is at the, the Lena Lubin la Laboratories. Um, also at the Lena, Lena 
Now, which specialties did you want to have here? Chemistry. Chemistry? Um, I think, I think uh, it would be more, yeah, like uh, philosophy. Okay. So you will be taking Introduction to Westamarian Art and Philosophy with Professor, um, um, with the Professor uh, Bernadette Summerfield. You will also be taking um, Foundational Principles of Mortal Psychology. Is that both of us? That's both of you taking it. Um, yeah. And uh, Mort Morty, you will be attending the course uh, Novel Applications for Volatile Chemistry with Dr. Crankston Heisenberg. Um, you will also be attending Dr. Grusin's course Advanced Geometrics and Differential Equations in Polyhedral Statistics. Is that just me or both of us? You're attending that. And then you will be attending uh, Dr. Everett Freed's class Understanding Anatomy. I, I, I'm a big fan. So those are the classes that, that you are each scheduled to attend over the course of the next couple days. So it's, it's generally one class per day. Who was the teacher for polyhedral stats? Uh, for advanced geometrics and differential equations and polyhedral statistics, that is Dr. Jacob Grustein. And that will be at the mathematics building. Cool. Yeah. And heavy then, course though, you took a heavy, <laughs> heavy hitters. <laughs> luckily, uh, luckily I'm friends with the Dean. <laughs> <laughs> oh man. Mm -hmm. All righty. So, um, the headmaster also mentions to you. Um, he says a few other things that you should you should note. Um, just a, a, off the student dorm dormitory, the favored coffee shop of the students on campus is known as El Diablo's. Um, you may find hobnobbing with the students at El Diablo's to be to your, um, to uh, a worthwhile um, pers pursuit. Although they put some interesting things in the coffee after, uh, after 9 p.m. Magic? Wine? No, that doesn't go with coffee. Brandy. Bourbon. Maybe we'll find out. Maple syrup. You can keep guessing. Sugar? Cream. <laughs> um, beyond that, um, around the, the campus as well, the headmaster mentions, there is also the campus guard and the student fellowship. So you may want to speak with both of those. The university library is also open to you as well. Um, Any, uh, what are, what, are the, what are those called? The things that students have where they all get together and have symbols. Oh, uh, fraternities? Fraternities. Um, there are student house. There are student houses. Uh, usually, each of the dormitory floors does organize their own groups. So there are several different uh, d different um, s sort of student housing associations. Are the uh, dormitories organized by you know their? focus a study or are they randomized some are some aren't mm. uh it it does it does vary uh, some some students prefer a very focused experience whereas others do not mm. all right well team we have several things to investigate do you want to summarize what are, what are the biggest things you're looking for we are looking for any information about the ship that was taken the missing monster from that ship and what happened with that the assassination attempt on the king in liberio and the missing magical resources these all could be linked together uh but they might not be don't forget of course the student absences and the student absences oh did we get a list did we end up getting a list of students Yes, there, he provides you with a list of, of several of the different s students' names of, of a couple missing students. Um, uh, among some of the, the missing uh, students include, um, I can give you a few, few names uh, off the top, but the most recent That's disappearances, um, uh, uh, students that haven't come back, uh, included Ben Bartleby and Hugo Bott. Those These are, were the ones that have yeah. disappeared in the last month. That that would be probably the first 
ones to kind of keep an eye out because they, they'll have the the freshest trail. Yes. Now we don't both, want to draw. Oh. Both Ben and he, he, what you note immediately is that both Ben Bartleby and Hugo Bott um, were attending. Um, were were students um, in your psychology class. Now, we don't just want to go barging around asking, hey, do you know these missing students? That's going to draw way too much attention. But we want to listen in and try to find who's talking about those students and infiltrate those friend groups. Mm. Yeah, we can start for like, just the, if we can get a sense of the campus life, I'm sure we can figure out pretty quickly what circles people run in or ran in. And then we get to the bottom of it. Yeah. I'm going to leave Ignatius. I'm going to leave most of my, because I know seeming disguises, mm -hmm. but it's very easy to see through disguises if it's investigated. So I'm not going to be wearing armor. Okay. And I'm not going to be wearing, I'm not going to be bringing Ignatius. Okay. Are you, do you want to carry any weaponry with you? Um, I'm going to carry, I'm going to carry my helm. Okay. It's, I'm going to be wearing it, but it's going to look like I'm wearing a bandana. Okay. Mm. Um, my staff is just a very big quill. <laughs> <laughs> just a giant big quill. quill. Um, I mean, Rudy can leave her lunar axe. I mean, it's in the dormitory. Like, you know, mm -hmm. Ignatius can hang there. I can summon mine because I'm attuned to it. So if I need it, <laughs> I can always okay. leave it in my room, but then mm -hmm. bring it to me because magic. Maybe I have a walking stick. Yeah. Yeah. Or no, maybe I should carry. It. Like I just have the surfboard that I bring everywhere. Or the, uh, what's an equivalent? Maybe like a giant bat. Like I'm a sports guy. Yeah. Well, well what sport do you play? Because actually, uh, um, yeah, it's up, it's up to you. Javelin throwing. <laughs> <laughs> I'm a javelin here. Mm. Uh, it's it's also worth worth noting that this is still the. Some students do carry weapons. So it's it's worth noting that the difference in culture from like modern day, modern day to from the setting of Westmar, it's not an issue that everyone is openly carrying a sword or a rapier of some kind. Mm. That's pretty expected and pretty normal. And there are many students that that would still carry a weapon of some kind. So it's also not outside the realm of possibility to disguise Ignatius as like a rapier. Yeah, or I'm gonna make it like a sword. regular long sword yeah. that I have on my back. Um, I'll probably leave the javelin, although I will use it yeah. when I have to like throw really really far, and then I don't want to go get it. Mm -hmm. um, and then uh, yeah, I'm gonna disguise yeah. the circlet, and I'm gonna have this shield of Saint Vitruvio, which is my ultimate frisbee. Okay. And frisbee is a game where you, it's like a it's discus. Yeah, it's my discus. It's, it's, it's a disc. Yeah. Nice. Ultimate discus. It's ultimate discus. <laughs> okay. Yeah. No. It's it. Um, probably the most pragmatic way to disguise Ignatius would be actually like a short sword worn at the wrist, at, at the waist. Even yeah, though yeah. it would be longer than that, like that would be the the most. That makes sense. The most like innocuous and, and less to her. Yeah. It's people are like. Carrying a weapon is not regarded as as scary or threatening as, as it would be on a modern university campus. <laughs> <laughs> and if someone challenges my honor, I have to duel them. I have to. Yeah. Student dueling to. amongst the students is technically forbidden at the university, but it still happens. That's good to know. Um, yeah, what are some other common rules around... There's no magic. Mm -hmm. There's a, a, a frowned upon dueling. There is technically a campus curfew as well. That's good to know. Too. Well, we're going to break that. <laughs> yeah. Break it. Does lot. that apply to staff? No, it, it, it doesn't. And it doesn't apply to students that are working on staff projects. I have the power to walk around after bedtime. <laughs> and to allow us to. Mm -hmm. Yes, yeah. yes, true. And, and naturally, of course, there's not supposed to be any alcohol in the student dormitories. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> we, we, no, seeming that to hide it somewhere. They're pop. They're so, they're, they're. Sodiums. Yeah, Sodiums. there's no alcohol in the student dormitories. <laughs> of course. 
We've all obeyed that rule. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah, we're all following that to the T. So, with all that, it is to to you um, to decide. Um, the what, bell rings. We're late. Yeah, what late what coffee. you're off to, and and where where you're headed off towards, and where you want to investigate first. The the standard pro- process at the university is that classes are generally held every afternoon. Um, co- cl- most classes meet once per week for several hours, and they're usually a lecture format of some kind. And then between that, students are expected to engage in reading or laboratory work or studying or writing of their of their own accord. Right. So it's not uncommon for students to have a class every day of some kind, or to then attend guest lectures. Right. Um, and so. Um, for the the two of you, on the first day, um, you are each attending a class separately. The second day, you're attending a class together, and then your separate classes as well. And I was thinking for Rudy, I could maybe get familiar with the campus. I was thinking maybe one of the other lecturers could show me around mm-hmm. on the first day, and then on the second day, I could actually have my lecture. Good. Yeah. If you like guys want to join my shared lecture. I will join I will, your shared I will lecture, be yes. There. Um, I think I, maybe the first day, I think Pluto is going to go out and... Um, sorry, Jack. Jack Plutoson is going to go out and do some... Uh, some, like, working out and getting comfy with, like, the, the, the field. You know, start to kind of buddy up to some of the other um, athletes on campus, mm-hmm. see about the, the, the local sports team, or the campus sports teams. Oh, okay. Um, other than uh, meeting at night, how are we gonna communicate with one another if something's up? <laughs> uh, that's a great question, Rudy. So we have this foolproof system where you yell pork chops as loud as you can and whoever, wherever you hear that, you run to it. Oh, all right. So I'm listening for pork chops. Yeah. Can you yell as loud as as far as this campus goes? Probably. What if you're under the ground or uh, in a lecture hall or something? I'm as long as we're 30 feet away from each other and no further, I can telepathically communicate. But we will be 30 feet away from each other. Guys, nothing's going to go wrong. <laughs> What's the worst that could happen? Mm. Don't you know telepathic bond? Yeah. It's... Don't you have the ritual spell to telepathically bond you all? Yeah, but it, that's a range of 30 feet, isn't it? Is it to cast? I think just to start. I think oh. then we can... <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> we just have to be within 30 feet when you cast it, I think. All right, yeah, cool. Then I'm telepathically bonding us. So okay. we seeming, and then we telepathically Possible bond. over any distance. Yeah, there we go. <laughs> How long, though? Oh, it's only good for... Um... I extend that as well. It's two hours. Okay. Mm-hmm. Interesting. Okay, two hours. That's good for the time that we're in our classes. Yep. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Okay. Uh, well, Pluto is doing athletic, or well, Jack is doing athletic stuff. Um, I'm gonna like hang out in like the school courtyard, wherever the most students are. Okay. And I'm going to stand broodingly at the most popular spot and look cool. Okay. So the first day that you are on the the campus is a Tuesday. It's Tuesday, so it's busy day. Monday's over. Everyone's back in in classes and sessions, and so the the morning um, is usually filled with with students having lab assignments, meeting, uh, having student meetings, working on collective projects, and and so the entire campus is alive with activity. Students moving across the green from between the buildings, traveling from the library to the dormitories, to the lecture halls, to the main hall as well, and and in between. Of course, as well, students do take this time. There is no proper athletics program at this school, but students still do engage in various athletic clubs and sports. Um, most most notably, um, and, and asking around Pluto, you find that um, there is a wrestling club. It's more of like a wrestling boxing sort of club that the, stu- that the s- students do. Um, and there also is a uh, croquet society. Um, and finally, there is a cricket society as well. So those are the, the main sports that are played uh, on on, wow. on campus. So, um, and uh, incidentally, um, 
turns out from from asking around the really popular like hangout game for the students lawn bowling <laughs> lawn bowling yeah interesting. that's interesting. that's that's the thing it's the biggest craze everyone's lawn bowling <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I'm gonna, that's gonna be one of my ends. I'm gonna get into lawn bowling and try to learn what I can about magic. And nice. from the lawn bowling. Cricket and lawn the elite, bowling. Elite lawn bowling teams. Yeah. Yeah. There is a, there is a cricket pitch that is on the other side of the green. Um, and so it, it's not part of the main camp screen, so it's like, opposite from the student the student dorms and one of the, the the lecture halls where the students have their pitch and places to watch the the, the matches and then nearby there they it, it par- forms an extended park where where then in one of the lower built like in the basement of the student dormitories they've actually built a gymnasium where they the wrestling uh, club meets and has their matches and everything, and, and they have a very strict je- dress code. You're supposed to wear like one of those onesie sort style, like shorts and shirt sort of things to the wrestling club. So if you, if you need to get one, you, you can have that furnished. Beautiful. Um, as for yourself, Sebastian, um, brooding around, uh, you you brood. Um, brood are, are you are you trying to drive people away or attract people towards you? I want to attract the cool kids. The the cool kids. The cool weird kids. <laughs> oh, I mean, smoking's not cool. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, smoke. smoking isn't cool, but I'm going to smoke to try to get somebody to ask me for smokes. Oh, that is a classic tactic. Um, what you see is that by the student dormitories is the. Um, El Diablo's coffee house. It's bu- it's part of the main level of the student dormitories, and it kind of builds out. And they've there's several tables and chairs that have spilled out onto a, what is essentially a patio by the student dormitories, and it looks out onto um, onto Hurdle Road and then out onto the student green. So you actually get a great view of the whole campus. By sitting out, having a coffee, and 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 a, coffee uh, and cigarettes, coffee and cigarettes, right? And there's a lot of and as you head up there, there are several students that are reading poetry um, and engaging in lively conversation with one with with one another. Um, and as you sit down um, and uh, have a have have yourself a cigarette, it's not long before another student uh, ap- approaches you. A uh, a small uh, uh, a- and tugs it at your side. It's a halfling student, and who has pitch black hair and darkened eyes. And he says, "Hey, buddy, bomb a smoke." Of course, my friend. And who might you be? Oh, chatty one, are you? Name's Elmo. Elmo Schultz. Thanks for the smokes. Hey, Elmo, as I give him a smoke. <laughs> I'm kind of new here. I'm studying non-magical alchemy. Yeah, I haven't seen you around here before. What program are you in? Non-magical alchemy. Sorry, chemistry. Mm. Now, I'm here with my book. I hold up the book that says study. <laughs> new at this school fellow student like yourself. Where might I fit in? You seem like a cool guy. (laughs) Maybe you could show me the ropes. Give me a deception check. (laughs) (laughs) I'm doing it. Are you a guy pretending to be another guy? (laughs) I get a 14. Um, Elmo looks you up and says, what's your name? Name's Morty. I mean, seemed like a nice fellow, Morty, but looking like that, no hair, sweater vest, I don't think you're going to fit in with my crowd. You got a problem with me being bald? Really? You just don't look that cool. What do the cool kids look like? 
he he points uh, out to so some of the other other halflings that are all kind of dressed like goths. They're all wearing black, and they have like black hair. Oh, people. Um, and and, um, and there, there's a group of them that are all like smoking cigarettes and and drinking coffee in in the shop, and they're all reciting very sad poetry about how much life sucks. Listen, Elmo. You all look like you're wearing a uniform. The real pain of being alive is found in here. You want to hear some sad poetry? I write the saddest poetry. Well, we love sad poetry at the uh, um, the Posthumous Poets Society of Altbrook University. <laughs> you know, I'll be there Tuesday, and I will blow all of your poems out of the sky with my depressing limericks and and rhymes. You will be crying for days, Elmo. And then we will be friends. All right. Ludo, meanwhile, as you look to the different sporting associations, um, what what sports were you interested in looking at? Well, lawn bowling is a definite yes. Okay. Um, we didn't get a read on. We just knew some of the, the students that were missing. Mm -hmm. So maybe I'm going to talk to maybe one of the coaches for like one of the teams to see if they have any sudden open positions available. Okay. So maybe that might lead to me to understand if there were some kids that were recently. Amongst, there are several students this morning that have already met for, for a bit of lawn bowling Tuesday morning before classes. They, uh, um, and as you approach the group that are lawn bowling uh, in the corner of the green, they play every Tuesday and Thursday morning. Uh, and Saturday evening, and as well as Saturdays and Sundays. And the group of them are al already, they're, they're a little bit rowdy because you recognize that there is one person among them who you've met earlier. It's Christoph Engelhart. Oh. And it's a Tuesday no. morning, it's not even noon, and he might already be drunk. <laughs> and he's out here lawn bowling, and he's surprisingly good at it. And you hear him going, Whoa! Yeah! Christoph is the man! I take you down! No one beats me. I'm the best at handling these balls. Um, gonna bowl you over! Yeah! Um, and he, he, he produces a what is very clearly a wineskin and starts chugging some of it back in the middle of broad daylight on the campus green. And as you come up, he's like, oh yeah! Or you think that you can challenge the master of the balls? It's me, Christoph Engelhart. You know, my dad's name is on a building. I'm the coolest guy around. You're new here, I've never seen you. <laughs> hey, hey, it's Christoph. I'm Jack Plutoson. Nice, Jack! Nice. Man, I like Get your... jacked. <laughs> yeah, check these out. Nice. Ooh, you're my new bro, man. Can I handle some balls too? Yeah, you can. Can you handle these balls? Let's see. And I bowl me over, bro. I want to try lawn bowling. Okay. So Jack Plutoson steps up to the pitch and give me I... an athletics check to lawn bowl. I don't. Oh, what? I I'm trying to imagine. I get a 29. <laughs> um, basically, you, you take the ball, like, it, it, there's like shallow grass and like the pins and everything, and you you see the ball, and you just like, the just fireball this long, the, 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 the shot straight down the field, and everything scatters about, and Kristoff is like, is that good? Did I do good? <laughs> Whoa, dude. You rock, man! Hey, yeah! Uh, thanks, Christoph. Hey, it's just like, you know, beginner's luck, but I'm sure someone as seasoned and as cool as you could still show me a couple ropes. Let me show you how it's done, bro! <laughs> and he takes the shot and throws it down down the field and it bounces. He's clearly off his game a, a little bit, but he's like, yeah, we call that the two for one, man! <laughs> 
And I'm gonna start high fiving Kristoff and the other excited. Does like the chest bumps? And like, woo, 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 <laughs> my bowling! <laughs> seen so much excitement around log bowling. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah. This and, is great. Yeah. Uh, and, uh, 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 um, and of course, as, as he, every time he does this, like, if, if there's any, uh, anybody that walks by, he's like, hey, look at me doing this. And it's clear that, like, most of the other students are totally unimpressed with this behavior. Um, the lawn bowling club is definitely all about the bros yeah. here at all, all yeah. University. Yeah, I can, I'm getting yeah. that vibe. So I'm 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 doing a lot of like one arm grabs and then like shoulder pull ins. I'm doing a lot of fist bumps. I'm hitting some of the wine sack for sure. Um, you know, my sandals are kicked off. I'm feeling the grass between my toes. You know, we're all having a good time. And it's what, 10 30, 11 yeah. o'clock? Yeah, this is great. <laughs> this is a great Tuesday. Um, you know, uh, showing people, we're throwing around the discus. Uh, we're just having a blast out there. Nice, uh, in the, man. In the, on, the, on the quad, where are we? We're on the field. On the maybe? green. On, on the, the green? green. Yeah. Um, yeah, just having a blast. And then I'm gonna look over towards uh, <laughs> Morty <laughs> and, and, and do like a, and then go back I'm, to my- <laughs> I'm like sitting there furiously trying to write poetry and I just look up and I'm like, and as you as you as you do, Kristoff is like, yeah, look at those nerds. Nerds words are for nerds, dude. They have like their like poetry society where they talk about sad. They're mostly sad because you know they can never make it. If you know what I mean. You wanna make it. You wanna get it. You know what I mean. No. <laughs> Oh, you know what I mean. This guy knows what I mean. He knows what I mean. Yeah! We're gonna do it later, right? Yeah! yeah. Let's do it later! Totally, man! Totally at like 4 o'clock in a predetermined place. At 4 o'clock in a predetermined place? You're a madman, no? No way! This guy's gonna do it at 4 o'clock in a predetermined place! Yeah, like, we gotta decide, like, right now. Like, we should figure it out right now. Like, we should figure out, like, if it's, like, gonna be a Stop one the, the chain! Bill. Outside of one of the specific, like over there, you want to do it over there? <laughs> You're crazy, man. You're crazy, <laughs> I man. I have to try to keep up with you. Oh, man. Yeah. Yeah. I just want to, <laughs> match, I just want to match your energy. I just want to, I just want to get to know you. I just feel like I know you. I just feel like I know you and that, like we, we know each other from like another time. Yeah, man. You're just like my old friend, Hugo. Oh man, that was bad. Oh yeah, bro. How, what happened to he you? He dropped out, dude. I think he got expelled. Oh why? Did he do something gnarly? He was the gnarliest. He you was tell. so gnarly. One time, oh, like so, so like so, so bro, so bro, so bro, yeah, bro. Yeah. Bro. Yeah. Bro. 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 The stuff they got in that chemistry department, it does stuff to you, dude. It's awesome. Like, you want to go out and party? Yeah. Can you get some? Hugo could. Can you? Who is Hugo's connect? How do we get it? You don't know? Bro, someone knows. I know. You know what? I'll get us some. I'll get us some tonight. You said we get it from the chemistry department? That's where Hugo went? They 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 were brewing up some stuff, man. Brewing up some stuff. You you get that stuff, it's like a party, man. Okay, yeah. okay, okay. Yeah, yeah. No, like like I remember it. It was like this, like it's like a beer, man, but it's like purple and bubbly mm -hmm. and like whoa dude yeah I, you have it it's like a party i need that i need that in my life christoph yeah i need that for me for who i am and for who i'm gonna be you know yeah like man. if i want to be my best me i need that live your best life right yeah yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. i feel that yeah 
Body, spirit, mind. Yeah. I feel like you're my brother or something. Yeah, man. Oh, come on, bro. <laughs> <laughs> more hugs. More hugs. <laughs> seven. We've had 17 hugs since we started ch talking. Like 17 full-on, like, m embracing moments. Jack, man, you're not gonna <laughs> drop out like, uh, like Hugo, are you? I wouldn't go anywhere. You just got here, though. Yeah, I know. <laughs> but I don't, I can't go anywhere. My dad's like super into me being here. You know what I mean? Same here, bro. Yeah, Same yeah, here. He's Did you know my really... dad's the Duke? What? Yeah. My dad's the Duke. And he's got connections with the king. Oh. Yeah, bro. You're a guy I need to know. I know the oh, king. You're a guy I Just need to Just yesterday, know. I was hanging out with the king, the king of Westmar. He said I was the coolest bro, man. That's unreal. He loves to party. That's unbelievable. He is like the coolest. He loves to party. And I think, bro, I, I think, I think we gotta, we, we get the good stuff. We invite the king, and then we'll be kings. Bro. I like it. We gotta get it though first, because if we don't have the stuff and we invite the king, that doesn't look good for your rep, bro. Bro, the king, my dad told me he's not gonna make me the duke. He's not gonna make me the duke. That's, Can you believe that's that? Un, that's Can you believe that? That's un He's not gonna make, I'm supposed to be the next duke. Duke, Duke Christoph Engelhardt. My dad said he's not gonna do it, but if I impress the king, the king be like. King will make you Duke. King will, yeah, exactly. Exactly, that right bro? Sense. That makes sense, yeah. that tracks. Yeah. I'm in. Yeah, and when I'm Duke. What does that make me? That'll make you, I'll make you the count. I can count. You can? That's so nerdy, bro. Look, I picked it up in, uh, I, I, um. The only thing more nerdy than words are numbers, dude. <laughs> I, I have to, I had to know how to count for lawn bowling. You know what I mean? Like, sometimes you're right. out there. You're, just, you're, you're out there. You, you gotta got no keep, pitch. you know how to keep score, dude. Yeah, you, you gotta, gotta keep, keep score. score cause but that's I call how, it counting. That's how you score. Yeah. Yeah, so I'm gonna, Christoph. You're like my best friend <laughs> and I would never let you down. So we got to get this tonight because I want to party hard and we're going to invite the king and it's going to be epic. Cool. Um, as you, as you say these words, you can feel Ignatius's <laughs> tugging on your mind being like, how dare you? <laughs> How dare you? Is this man truly your best friend? <laughs> My eye starts twitching and, and I, I look like I have like a severe migraine or like and, and I, I'm and I and I'm I'm fighting the 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 pull of Ignatius. Give me a charisma saving throw. <laughs> oh no. I get a six. You get a six? Ignatius says, this man is now your best friend. You will treat him as such. Deceive him no more. If you will it, go into the bonds of friendship, do it with truth. Oh no. Kristoff, <laughs> I gotta level with you, man. I'm bigger than this. I'm royal too. What? Yeah. You are? Yeah. I'm a prince. What? I'm a prince and and your prince and together we can be princes. Two princes. Dude, you're a prince? Yeah. A prince of what? My dad is a king and I well, he's trying to be a king and I mean, he's really close. Like he's going to be there one day. But right now, but he, there's only one king in Westmar, dude. 
Yeah, my my dad, he where I'm from another place. Where? I'm from uh Caspia. You're from Caspia, bro? Yeah. That's rad, man! <laughs> Dude! Yeah, I, I, I sailed over here, um, a bunch of people got killed. Uh, Immediately he turns like, Guys, you guys gotta check this out! My new bro Jack is a Caspian Prince! That's rad, man! <laughs> I like look up and like... <laughs> and I... <laughs> I'm like eating my book. <laughs> no. Oh no! Oh no! <laughs> And I look back over at you and I go... (laughs) I wink more. (laughs) Okay, we're gonna put a pause on this. Rudy, while this has been going on, what are you doing? Um, I'm making my way to what I assume somewhere is there's a staff room. Yeah, so many of the faculty have their, their, take their breakfast at the faculty um, uh, building, but there's also the faculty club. Mm. Which is its own little house where many of the faculty take their breakfast. They will have drinks in the evening. They'll they'll meet and kind of hobnob around and and discuss things with with one another. It's not far from the campus green. Okay. Itself, yeah. Um, my goal is to see if I can check in with Everett Freed as being kind of like my staff mentor while I'm here as a guest lecturer. Okay. Yeah. Okay. As you um. As you enter into the faculty club, um, the unlike the student areas, which are far more noisy, the the faculty areas are much more subdued and relaxed. Mm -hmm. Um, And asking around more regularly, you actually hear that Everett Freed has already gone over to the laboratories. He is a very early man, but several of the other faculty, they say, that they heard that you were guest lecturing and that you should absolutely check because Everett Freed is one of the 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 penultimate professors of anatomy uh, in in Westmar and would love to speak with you. Oh, that's that's amazing. I, I'm doc, you know, Dr. Ada Bronte actually told me that I should come here and and speak with him because I could learn a lot from his uh, mm. lectures. So thank you very much and pointing me in the right direction. They, they, they do. They, they say that his offices are on the third floor of the um, uh, Lena Lubin Laboratories, and he's usually there this morning. Okay, I'm going to make my way over there. And I look, I want to make myself look like a little bit frail. Okay. Like a little bit, like I'm a bit slower, <laughs> a, bit, a little bit of a slower pace. You and... travel across the campus green, and roll me a d6. Six. Okay. As you travel across the campus green, you're walking across just as you hear this incident occurring with Paluto. You You have the opportunity to potentially bail him out of this before this gets worse. What do you want to do? Um, I'm going to walk over because I hear all this commotion Mm. and I go, is this the rambunctious? atmosphere that I've come here as a guest lecturer. Y'all are being so loud and disturbing. This is my first time here and you're giving me such an impression of this place. A bad one. Whoa, chill out old lady. Don't be a buzzkill. He takes the wineskin out and chugs some more. This is my bro. He's a prince. A pr- You don't look much like a prince. Uh... <laughs> It, my dad sent me to like learn uh, about things that are going on here, and it's really important that um, you I feel I, Ignatius <laughs> smoldering under the illusion. <laughs> um, right. And and the, the the blade says, "I can barely abide this deception." <laughs> uh, the uh, I I am a prince. Uh, I'm from Caspia, um, you know, I'm only dressed this way because I'm trying to make friends with, uh, this guy. I, I think, you know what, you better stop lying to your friends. Why would a prince come here if they could be at their own royal tutelage? That just seems a bit wrong. 
I just really want to impress people. I'm impressed, bro. I'm impressed. That's all that matters. It's, give me a persuasion check. Uh, 15. Seems like several of the other students are now, um, even though Paluto is telling the truth, the disguise that Sebastian created combined with your story, his truth, his, the truth of Paluto's story now sounds so absurd <laughs> as to be unbelievable, even though it is the truth. <laughs> I swear, I swear, I have a magic sword. I have everything. And several other students are like, yeah, sure. And me, me, meanwhile, um, meanwhile, Christoph is like, dude, I believe you. People used to say terrible things like about me, like things that I weren't true, that once, you know, I fought a troll and no one believes me. I've killed so many trolls. I've killed hundreds. Man, that's so cool. And the other the other students are like, this is they're they're clearly like, this is not believable at all. And they're they're walking away. <laughs> I go up to um <clears throat> go up to uh what the uh Christoph. Christoph and I take his wineskin and I say, Sonny, do you even know what this is doing to your liver and heart? You best if you wanna make it to a good old age. You best give this up. And I take it and I start to walk away and take a sip. <laughs> and he says, if I knew what it was doing to my liver and heart, I'd actually pay attention in anatomy class. Well, he should come to my lecture then because I'm going to be doing a whole lecture on anatomy tomorrow. Join us. Okay. <laughs> Having successfully bailed Ooh. Pluto out from blowing his cover, you are able to make it over to the, the laboratory. Rudy? <laughs> <laughs> Um, look like a liar. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm just a big liar. <laughs> um, um, with, within the Lena Lubin laboratory um, are several other things that you pass by. There are two big lecture theaters, mm -hmm. but what you also see within the lab is there are signs pointing you towards the seminar room, the menagerie of exotic creatures, the Filbert Hag Museum of Peculiar Specimens. There is also an operating theater and a small hospital ward within the laboratories themselves. Mm -hmm. um, and you note that there is, are several large signs pointing to the basement that note the areas for chemical storage and the morgue. Ooh, yes. That's what I need. <laughs> um, okay. Um... So chemical storage and the morgue. Yes, and one of the signs that you pass along the way beneath the morgue, it notes that past the morgue are the dissection and autopsy rooms. But the doctor's offices are on the upper floors. The morgue, the chemical storage, all those things are in the basement. Mm. Um, give me a perception check. 10. Okay. Um, that's the uh, um, beyond beyond those. Um, you do note that there are signage for the biological, chemical, chemical and inflammatory laboratories. Inflammatory. <laughs> but you make it up to the the where um, Everard Freed has his office, <clears throat> um, and um, the door is closed. I knock. You hear a voice go, Yes, come in. And I s slowly open the door and I say, Excuse me, Professor. Um, <clears throat> my name is uh, Professor Penny Wellred, and I'm here as guest lecturer. I, told, I was told you might be the person I'd speak to about getting familiar and, and getting set up for my lecture tomorrow. Ah, uh, yes. Penelope Wellred. I am Dr. Everett Freed. The man has a, um, the man before you is a slight man in a white shirt with brown trousers. He's taken his jacket off, which has slunk across his table. He has thick circular glasses that reflect the light of the day um, in a slightly unsettling way. Hmm. He has a very long forehead that ends in a prominent widow's peak. 
Um, and his office is filled with jars of preserved organs, skeletons in and skulls of various creatures arranged and labeled, and a desk that is piled in books and paperwork. Quite prominently also displayed by one of his desks is a cabinet that bears an impressive collection of scalpels, saws, and other surgical tools under a glass cabinet. Hmm. He says, I must apologize, Professor Wellread. You have me at a disadvantage. I haven't read any of your works or publications previously. Uh, what, what was your thesis? Well, I work very closely with the uh, different uh, organizations around different uh, countries on the, um, the impact of blunt trauma on the human body, specifically in solving offenses with misdemeanor assaults involving piercing, slashing, and bludgeoning instruments. Give me a deception check with advantage. Very specific. Fifteen. He shifts his weight in his chair, crosses his arms, and he says, Ah, yes. Very interesting. And you may give me an insight check. Two. Cool. Uh, uh, Based on that, (laughs) seems seems like you got him. He believes you. (laughs) Lied. <laughs> Successful lie. Interesting. I look forward very much to your guest lecture. Well, I must admit it is, with respect, it is a little pedestrian compared to my current pursuits, but I think the student body will find it fascinating nonetheless. I agree. I, uh, I do do a lot of my work with common folk, non necessarily uh, highly educated individuals, but I find the work to be very thorough and accurate mm. and impactful in uh, solving the mysteries of the human and humanoid body. One always hopes that their work has a meaningful impact. Oh, I meant literal impact in terms of be, you know, stabbing and oh. bludgeoning and <laughs> piercing. Yeah. Hmm. I see. I see. I mean, uh, one thing I would love, as I'm getting ready for my lecture tomorrow, um, d- d- is there any uh, human uh, cadavers I might use to bring across my points? Preferably non, uh, non-harmed uh, ones. That is a most unusual request for a guest lecturer. There are certainly uh, specimens available in the morgue, but I had intended to use them for some of my own research pursuits, and the university and our faculty must go to great lengths to secure adequate donations for our delicate research. You must understand that simply using such rare resources for a student demonstration is somewhat wasteful. Well, is is it wasteful if the students learn a significant amount of knowledge from my demonstration? I don't think so. I think the value of what I'm going to be bringing to the student body will outweigh the use of such resources. What exactly will you do with the corpse? Oh, well, I'm going to show them the impacts of such different types of weaponry on the humanoid body. Hmm. 
Very well. Provided I can provide you with a cadaver, but your demonstration must still leave adequate remains that I could utilize for my own research. Of course. It is imperative that the brain, the heart, the liver, the intestines are not destroyed. I can work with that. Definitely. And any limbs should be severed as cleanly as possible. Oh, they will be. <laughs> will you be you. severing the spine? Um, I don't think for this lecture, no. Very well. If you do, do it between the head and the neck, please. Oh, actually, yes, I will be. <laughs> <laughs> the, which, the which, which vertebrae do you prefer? Mm. Oh, excellent. Third or fourth. <laughs> <laughs> All right, I can do it. All this shop talk. <laughs> very, very good. I sh that should leave the remains with suitable remnants for my purposes. And may I ask, just as I'm curious, learning about the, the university, I may even, if you don't mind, uh, attend one of your lectures, what are the uh, specifics that you're using these specific body parts for? I am researching the means by which we may extend human faculties to the beyond the limits of natural physiology. Hmm. When organs critical to the body fail, that results in the death of the body as a whole. You're right there. Uh, I mean, I can say on more than one occasion that I have seen even the slightest implication on one of those body parts being a cause of death. Mm-hmm. Indeed. <laughs> Indeed. <laughs> I mean, I, I thank you for your, your time and, and anything else that I can learn from, from being here. Of course, that will help with the work of the uh, law enforcements of different regions that I have support. Very well. I will have one of my research assistants bring out a sample from the morgue for your lecture. Where will you be delivering the ward? In the operating theater or in the one of the lecture halls? Well, uh, probably the operating theater, as uh, it might make a mighty mess if uh, we're doing it in just lecture hall. That's okay. very well. Very well. I look forward to your demonstration, Professor Wellred. Um, as I go to leave, I just want to take a quick glance across the books or pamphlets or whatever he has sure. on his desk. Um, I just want to see if there's any themes or any uh, specific pieces that stand out as unusual based on what he said in his research. Okay. Give me a perception check. 20. 20. As you scan about the room, you can't help but notice that one of the preserved heads in one of the jars, it definitely looks like its eyes have changed position over the course of your conversation. It's a preserved head, not a skull, so the flesh is all still on it. It's been skinned, so the, all the muscle is exposed, and the eyeballs are still there. And you think that when you first came into the room, the eyes were closed. But now the eyes are open, and they were definitely looking at you. So as I go to leave, I say, Well, Professor, um, you have a mighty fine collection here of specimens. Some of them look so lifelike and alive. I, I'm certainly jealous of the ones that you have here. Yes, we, our chemistry department provides us access to state-of-the-art preservative fluids that I am able to use to ensure the best and slowest rate of decay for any of our valued samples. Interesting. Well, maybe I can have a little bit more of a look and see about these preservation fluids. Uh, while I'm here, as it would, again, help my work in understanding the crimes in which 
these actions happen, which I investigate. Mm, certainly. And I, I walk out. <laughs> okay. With the morning activities over, the three of you do find an opportunity to meet back again. Um, or if you want to communicate with one another, what would you like to do? Because you still do have a telepathic bond. Guys, I need a word that rhymes with truth. Booth. Booth. Aloof. Aloof. That, that could work. Okay, thank you. Oh, by the way, we should meet up. <laughs> Definitely. I found out some really creepy things about this uh, professor uh, that I'm sharing a faculty thing with. Mm. We're supposed to be investigating. Yeah, yes, uh, I, got, I got a lead on uh, one of the missing students, Hugo. Mm. Uh, he was last friends with, guess who? Kristoff, the son of the Duke. You guys have been finding leads? Yeah, what have you been doing? Writing poetry for about three and a half hours. <laughs> Why are you writing poetry? <laughs> I'm this close to having friends. You're not even in the literature department at this yeah, university. Yeah, you're wasting time on poetry. I almost seemed cool, and he told me I was <laughs> cool, and I have to be cool. Wait, a halfling told you that, that you to be cool. You I didn't have poetry? the cool hair, the the, the the dark eyes, and I just he, he told me that there was a poetry club. We do have to meet up. We have to meet up now. Where are we going? Um, uh, my office. <laughs> yeah, that makes that <clears throat> that works. Um, uh, can I come out and be like? You too. <laughs> Come see me in my office. I have questions. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. Yes, me and this other student who I've never <laughs> met before. Hey, you man. You look suspicious. I am suspicious. Suspiciously cool. <laughs> All right, I head in. Okay, back in the office. The three of you are in a secure place where you can speak clandestinely. Um... Thank you, Rudy. I, I really got over my head. Uh, uh, I was taken over by Ignatius, and oh, sure. I was I was I was compelled to speak the truth, um, as all do uh, within its aura. Maybe Wait. you should leave uh, Ignatius in your dorm room. It probably makes a lot of sense. You were speaking uh, the truth. What? That guy's your best friend. Oh no no no! <laughs> That's then Ignatius made me. Be his best friend, so then I had to start telling him the truth. So he's Thus, he friend. is your best friend. <laughs> oh, he's my best friend. <laughs> he's your best friend. Stop it! And I, I'm gonna take Ignatius off and like throw it on uh, uh, Rudy's desk. I just need, I just need a break from it. I need a break from it. Um, it's really hard to be deceitful and carry a magic sword that demands uh, truth and mm -hmm. has way more power over me. <laughs> It's really hard. All that I'm hearing is that you have a new best friend, and um, no, 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 no. I'm gonna be writing poetry about this. <laughs> Can okay. you focus? I need you to focus. I am focused. I am this close to having a group of friends, and once I have a group of friends, I will be able to infiltrate that group of friends and find out everything that they know. You already have a group of friends. No, you're friends with Krista. Oh my god. I heard you guys Why on the are you going yard. Through this? Look we, at you, you're all lawn bone. I can't you, lawn you, you bow. Just have to, you just have I don't to, know how to throw a ball into a We're pin. trying to do a job. Exactly. <laughs> We're trying to do a job and find those students and being cool is not part of it. Well, it's <laughs> right? somewhat part of it. Maybe for you, for you, being Un goth, I don't know what that group was. Gothic, uh, whatever their aesthetic is, you go with them. But you, you gotta. I will with infiltrate that crowd. both the chemistry department and the po the deceased poet society. Chemistry department. I heard something. I found something out while I was uh, doing the job that we're here to do, not write poetry. Um, <laughs> I found out that they have. Okay, so I went in to this office with this. Creepy professor who had body parts everywhere. What who wants to see name? that all the time? What, what, who? Uh, his name is Everett Freed. Okay. Okay. And he is focusing on his studies and extending the life of, I guess, humanoid things. Sounds like necromancy to me. Sounds right up that alley for sure, but in scientific ways. He just had a bunch of body parts, and I swear one of them 
was not alive because it wouldn't be alive with the head off the, the body, but like definitely was looking at me from closed eyelids to open eyelids when I was in that room. Interesting. What are you doing tonight? Um, actually, uh, I have a lead on the chemistry as well. So Hugo, one of the missing students that was friends with Kristoff, he used to get him some stuff. And the way Kristoff described it, it was purple, it was bubbly, and it made you weird. And it made you feel weird. They use it as kind of like a party drink, but I have a feeling that that's the stuff that you used to make. Or delirium, something to do with delirium. Yeah, aqua expurgo maybe, or something maybe way less refined. Maybe just like a concoction of delirium and, and wine. I'm supposed to be the investigator here and you guys are so good at this. <laughs> I just talked to one person <laughs> and they got me hooked into poetry. <laughs> You're very easily manipulated. We know that because of the Queen of Thieves. We know that because hey, of your cousin. Hey. We know that because of me. <laughs> we know that because of et cetera, et cetera. I'm on to something. I believe it. But I think we have a lead with this chemistry thing. Mm. Once I infiltrate this deceased poet society, <laughs> I will know all the secrets of this school. I swear to you. They might have something, you know, the quiet kids, they have ears, they listen. If they're writing poetry, they got to... They gotta know some stuff, right? That's what, how do you write poetry? <laughs> you just rhyme some words, right? right? All right, what do you think of this? If I had magic, it would be tragic. I'd send a girl to hell. That seems appropriately true. <laughs> seems well, awkwardly yeah. specific. Based no, but on your if history. I had magic, so it's not no bad. Is this bad? Okay. No, 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 I'm not, there's no such out. thing as bad. No, I think it's out. a process. Okay, I think it's like I'll try again. I've never done poetry. It's creative. It's like I like that you're exploring something different. It's new. It's but new. Maybe if we were under different circumstances, like not under charge from the king to kind of like figure out whose assassins were, you would totally be doing great. You are downplaying the fact that I'm infiltrating an entire group of this school. I'm going to be the best poet. I will write a poem that will beat all of their poems because I'm the best at anything I set out to do. Can it be about the chem the chemistry and so the chemistry students take an interest in you? Because we're going down the chemistry route and I'm pretty sure your classes are more specific to that. If I write a poem about what we're investigating that has little seeds that I can plant into the minds of the people listening. Mm. You just can tell them our plan through poetry. <laughs> yeah, that sounds no. like you might be I'm going to get the right people to talk to me. I like magic when it's purple. Tell me about it in the hall. Uh, you're close. You're so close. We'll get the there. landing. But I think tonight Wait. we should interrogate a head. Uh, a head. Like the head. head. The head. We're gonna go steal the head and interrogate it. You said it's, it looked lively? I mean, it didn't look lively, but I could definitely tell as I came in, its eyes were closed, and as I was leaving, its eyes were open. So we take the head out, and we ask it some questions. If it doesn't answer, then it's just a head. How, how do we... Yeah, how do you talk to it? Do you have any magic that'll let us, like, do something there? Or do you assume when we take it out of the jar, it's just gonna come alive? I don't know I, what, I wouldn't want to touch it. I don't know what chemistry is capable of. Maybe it makes heads talk. Mm -hmm. I thought uh, the chemistry is like a lower form of magic. Yeah. Yeah. So I don't know if... Are you sure? No. I, I think we need to break into the chemistry place. And if uh, we're going to steal heads, we should also look for the purple bubbly stuff. And we and, look for the purple bubbly stuff. Yeah, and the whatever the fluid is that preserves it, because I think there's something magic going on there. Yeah, that makes sense. Mm. Um, yeah, maybe we try to get in there tonight. I like that. I think we do. But don't you have a poetry thing tonight? That's... Is that tonight? Yes, Tuesday nights. Mm -hmm. How, from when to when? I already saw you on the flyer, like, they, they're featuring uh, the, the, Morty. The Posthumous Poet Society, they meet at midnight. Okay, we have until I need to be there at midnight. So, so guys, we we infiltrate the chemistry lab. I will I will get some words to use in my rhymes, my poetry. I'm gonna make a masterful poem that will reveal the secrets. Trust me, I am the key to unlocking this. Well, hey, in we my actually, poetry. I like this because what if we use the poetry society as like our alibi? Yeah. Well. We show up early. Then we, we duck out. Make sure our faces are seen. 
we break into the chemistry lab and then we come back to do your reading and then that way people won't suspect us as the ones that break in if there's like a... Well, could you uh, teleport us in there? So that way it seems like, it's not like someone's gonna see us walking from place to place. Did you take anything from the chemistry lab? I have never been to the chemistry lab, but I'm sure I can. Uh... The room you were in, wasn't that the? Oh, that, no, that was the, uh, the, the professor's room. Um, his yeah, office. His own office. Okay, then maybe while we take our class, Rudy, if you can get into the chemistry lab, just even to get like a cork or something or a, a glass bottle, mm. a piece of paper. Something. Some. Yeah, I can pretend like I'm lost on campus. Nice. And not follow signs. Perfect. <laughs> but if I get some, you can teleport us in there. I can teleport you in there All if right. I have something from the location. All right. I retrieve Ignatius. Always coming with. <laughs> Yeah. All right. <laughs> hey. <laughs> uh, no, maybe I'll put him back in the dorm. I'll put him back in our in our uh, our dorm before uh, before class. Ignatius, the burning oh. blade of truth. I have to go to my psych class. Sorry. Okay. So can you cast the disguise since we're up till midnight? It's probably gonna be more than sixteen hours, right? I will recast it. Okay. Okay. So, in the afternoon. Pluto and Sebastian, you head to your respective classes. Sebastian, you attend a very, very long-winded class called Advanced Geometrics and Differential Equations and Polyhedral Statistics with Dr. Jacob Grustein. Over the course of the lecture, the good professor um, explains the various um, um, shapes for you. And the lecture very much involves the the fundamental breakdown of the multifarious vertices and probabilities associated with tumbling isohedrons, explaining how the several different properties of these polyhedrons <laughs> can actually be used in novel ways to mm. simulate probability and perhaps even may even facilitate constructions of different mathematical layers of reality as long as the different outcomes mapped onto the respective sides of the <laughs> isohedron are actually then connected with varying outcomes associated with quotidian actions um, contingent upon everyday activities and normal. <laughs> Sebastian falls asleep abruptly in that class. Mm -hmm. I'm never going to understand that. <laughs> That's way over my head. Yeah, yeah. I don't think anybody at this table could ever understand how uh, having ver uh, having variable outcomes mapped to the multiverses, the, the various sides of an isohedron, could mathematically simulate dynamic outcomes with applications mirroring interactions of the real world. What are we really talking? <laughs> like, what are we really talking about here? Like, you saying I that like? I don't even know where to start. Like, you, <laughs> you create a, a three-dimensional shape with 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 symbols on it, and and what it, it mimics chance, and and this is nonsense. I didn't even know where you got that from. <laughs> Just all nonsense. I mean, there's a little bit of magic in science. <laughs> <laughs> write it down. Write it down. Use that <laughs> in your poem. <laughs> um, and. Pluto, you on uh, on the other hand, you attend a riveting class known as Introduction to Westmorian Art and Philosophy with Professor Bernadette Summerfield, uh, where you um, are, are um, attend a very um, vigorous lecture um, about um, one of a playwright uh, known. Um, as uh, Infernus Gotha, and Infernus Gotha's famous tale, um, The Descent into the Abyss, tells the story of a um, erstwhile mage who, um, seeking the banished spirit 
of a young friend um, traveled through the depths of space and time through paintings and portraits in order to recuperate the lost spirit of a, of, of a lost one. Yes. Oh, man. And can by the end of it, do I understand the tragedy? What was the outcome? Everyone's in tears. It's a riveting story and, and, and... There's sadness, there's loss. Yeah, yes. Although one of the students does say the story's a little bit far-fetched. It's kind of unbelievable, like the motivations are not really entirely clear and it seems a little bit over overwrought and overcomplicated. I keep my notes <laughs> and I'm gonna share them with a certain close friend later. <laughs> Oh, is it your lawn bowling buddy? <laughs> yeah, <first off. laughs> Talk to him about my class, see how, how things are. You okay? <laughs> I actually get to write a poem. <laughs> okay. And it better be mind-blowing. You, you have to convince all these halflings that you're cool like them. Dinner is also served in the student student halls uh, later, later that evening. Um, there's a the, the long halls in the student dormitories where a um, a rather thin soup is served to uh, to everyone with some decent bread and and some beer or wine. And the evening approach and as the evening approaches and the curfew sets in when most students are expected to uh, attend their beds and the campus guard goes on patrol the meeting of the posthumous poet society is on its way uh oh it's coming i get in the meantime could i have gone to the chemistry oh my chemistry? apologies we skipped ahead a little bit too far okay. um yes so as they attend uh, um our classes so as, the, as they attend um their classes you wanted to go into the chemistry building and see if you could get something now mm. now as, as we said the 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 Lena Lewin laboratories have several floors, and then the central staircase basically connects all the floors to one another, and then goes down into the basement. Mm. The, the basement is multiple levels, and the first level down is where there are... The, the central stairwell connects the first level of basement and all the upper levels of the building, but then the hallway extends along from either end of the, the rectangular shaped building. And then there's two sets of stairs that go down to the next sub-basement level. Mm. However, you note that both of the door doorways are locked and labeled as faculty access only. Mm. Um, they're, they're not written for student access. In the basement level, there are several rooms that are noted as chemical storage but most of the things here that are open for student storage are uh, are are suitable for student access nothing particularly dangerous is kept here mm -hmm. and the the restricted areas are where the morgue is um and so all, everything <coughs> chemical down here is accessible so there's what i would be more specific in saying is that there's two layers to this. There are chemicals and ingredients that the students need for their, that are given, that the students have access to for their own laboratory experiments. Mm -hmm. But then the hazardous chemicals and the morgue require faculties to be, students have to be with faculty to go down to where these things are stored. Okay. Okay. And can I try to is there any um, anything preventing or any sort of like uh, key or something to show that I have to enter these areas? So what you can see is stepping down into the basement. First of all, you're not alone mm. because there are many students doing their lab work. And in fact, as you come into the building, there are two lectures that are happening right now mm. in in the the building itself. The lecture halls and the seminar room are filled with students and some of the professors, including Everett Fried, are giving their afternoon talks. So, the basement level, which has several of the chemical laboratories in it, 
there are students in the labs that are working, they're turning on their burners and, and mixing a few things and trying out a few experiments. Several students are in one of the labs that you passed by in the basement and they're all doing the sections on frogs. Mm. Um, and as you come down the, the stairs, a, another woman greets you um, and she's surprised to see you moving about, um, but she is a average built woman. She is wearing a black, um, a black gown with an apron, um, more like a surgical apron, a surgical gown. And she has thick leather gloves and, um, a pair of goggles that she, she wears. Um, and she has a, um, leather cap that is covering all of her hair. Mm. Right, so that keeps all of her hair tucked in and, and, and underneath. And she actually has a scar face mask that is pulled down over, over her face. And as she, as you enter into the, the area, she says, I don't know you, but you don't look like a student. Who are you? Well, my name is um, uh, Professor Penny Wellred, and I'm a guest lecturer. Oh. I had wondered if we'd had a guest lecturer uh, here. What um, I, I'd heard about, I'd heard about you from that, the headmaster. Allow me to introduce myself. Um, I am uh, Erla Lockwood. Um, I am one of our professors of chemistry here. I'm I'm just supervising several student uh, student projects right now, but uh, I could certainly show you around uh, and, and tell you about the facilities. I understand you're giving a lecture on the. The impact of blunt force trauma on the human body tomorrow. Exactly. You Lovely. were right. It's going to be a very interesting uh, lecture that I hope will be very impactful on the students. I think they'll be, that, that they'll be absolutely awestruck by the display. I hope so. And I mean, I definitely will take you up on your offer. I'm very interested in, in, in this part of the building and just seeing what students have access to, what things are being worked on. You know, I'm very curious mm. as I work with uh, <clears throat> not always academics. So it's seeing what they're doing is, is you know, what you're doing here is very interesting. To me. Well, you, you must I, actually, I, I must say that um, one of my colleagues uh, several of my colleagues in the chemistry department are actually a field right now with some of our most promising students. Oh. So most of the students that are working right now are actually in their early, the early stages of their studies, as most of the more advanced students have actually gone, gone a field uh, for some, for some field work. Oh. Um, most, re uh, yes, I, I'm, I'm very, very sorry. It's, it's really just me that, that's around here right, right now. I've been working there needed to be somebody because, of course, our colleagues in anatomy, like yourself, do need the support of the chemistry department. So it's a bit of that interdepartmental collaboration that we do so well here. Of course. Well, I'm, I'm open to collaborating. And again, anything I can share that will help further the work that you're working on is, is uh, you know, my goal mm. in helping out here. And uh, of course, you know, that especially looking at your attire, I could use some um, <clears throat> aprons and gloves and such for my lecture tomorrow. Certainly, I can furnish that some, for, for some of you. It's such a, sh a shame. I would have, my, my, my colleagues, uh, Lizanne Bean and Arabella Sundstrom, uh, they're, they're currently a field right now, mm. uh, with, with several of our more, more promising students. It's a, it's a, it's a real shame. Where are they, uh, if you don't mind me asking? I am not sure where Arabella's been off to. She had a little bit of a tiff with some of our other faculty and a few others have, have gone re recently. But the, but Lizanne is out with uh, Jurian Muller, um, one of our other experts in, in, in actually in ancient history. Um, and the two of them have done a joint expedition um, to the Ochtenwald, hoping that they can find some very rare samples that, that are there. Uh, they have some very fascinating leads that they've been pursuing, apparently. Uh, the, what kind of, what samples are you referring to? I don't hear anything strange in the Ochtenwald. Uh. <laughs> well. <laughs> This is between you and me. Of course. As 
a, as a colleague and researcher. Yuri and Muller, in his research, believes that he has found the location of one of the lost vaults of Sorcerer King Moel IV, who was one of the few Sorcerer Kings who had a chief apothecary, a former high priest of Dianchet. And it's our suspicion that this might be one of the rare opportunities that we might be able to get information on ancient research. Normally, the Amethyst Academy seizes anything remotely related to any of these things. Of course. And we have no ability to pursue any research into any of the mundane discoveries that might have been done in, in our historical past. Because for those, for, for, for those who interact, and this has been one of the hardest things that has impacted our field, is that for centuries, the worshippers of the old gods have been at the forefront of medical knowledge. But of course, these associations lead to magical fields, which we are strictly forbidden from pursuing. And so, Muller and Bean are hoping that at least we, they can have an opportunity to look into something before someone else tramples on it. It's mm. a very recurring thing. As soon as we find anything too interesting, that's the point where we have to draw the line because that's when magic gets involved. And mm. that's where our studies are supposed to end. Here, a sprinkle of magic in the academy just comes and steals it all away. I'd get you. The, well, the slightest whiff of it, yes. Hmm. Well, it sounds like they're doing something fantastic for us mundane folk. Indeed. Indeed. But, uh, um, yeah. but nevertheless, I can certainly show you a few things um, and give you a brief tour of some of the, the, the facilities. I, I will let you know that several of the uh, cham chambers below, um, Dr. Freed has, and, and Dr. Dr. Rinks are in the midst of a very delicate study. Mm. And so several of our, lab, our deeper labs are currently under restricted access just to those professors and their research assistants. Ah, makes sense. Makes I wouldn't want to go disturbing nothing that they're, uh, you know, might, might need that separate mm. space. But I am interested just to see the uh, the other things that might be mm. around, get my feel of uh, the, the locations here, if you don't mind. Certainly. She produces a key and unlocks one of the doors to the chemical storage. Ooh. Smiling warmly, she offers to show you some of the um, some of the things that are kept in their more chemical storage. The rooms that she brings you to don't show you anything remarkable. You're not really knowledgeable enough about chemistry to know what this is, mm. but it, it mostly is the only thing that you do realize is that, and this is something that you are familiar with is a lot of the things that are stored down here are explosive mm. or could cause fires or have military applications. Mm. Um, and so while you're down here, you want to try to pawn an object of some kind. Definitely. Okay. <laughs> yes. Give me a deception check. Not very deceptive. 14. You are able to grab a vial from one of the racks. Perfect. Just like an empty one? Yeah. Okay, cool. <clears throat> just put it in my pocket. Like, um, well, uh, Mac Erla, is it Erla? May I call you Erla? Yes. Thank you so much, Professor, Doctor, uh, in showing me around. I really appreciate it. Getting my bearings on this whole place while I come to educate your students on uh, such amazing and sometimes gruesome things, but I'm sure they'll appreciate my mm. knowledge. If you do, even though we're not supposed to interact with magic that much, it's been so lovely showing you around, and I'll tell you, one of, even though we do get audited by the Academy regularly, mm. that does mean that we are able to use some of their services to keep things safe around here. Mm. So the doors here are actually arcane locked. And well, I have one of the, one of the keys if you do need to get back down this way, 
again, if you if there's anything that you need, you can access the first the first hall uh, with the password sodium phosphate. Well, I very much uh, I don't really know what that is, but um, <laughs> <laughs> sounds very magical <laughs> indeed. Uh, but, uh, but I appreciate you uh, helping me out, especially because I, I don't want to bother too much when asking for. Uh, you know things for my lecture for tomorrow so if i need to if i forget anything i appreciate you giving me that so i can just grab it and and not disturb anyone in uh, getting prepared for such a lively uh mm. interaction with the students sodium phosphate is an organic compound often used as a laxative or dietary supplement <laughs> 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 Woo! all right <laughs> um, have have a wonderful evening um Miss uh, Professor Lockwood, and uh, we, we hopefully I invite you to my lecture tomorrow and see the excitement of uh, of, um, <laughs> of the impact of blood trauma on the humanoid body. Very good, very good. So then we bring it back all together. I shuffle. Yeah. Um, I'm gonna retrieve Ignatius before we go to the midnight meeting. Okay. I think you're gonna bring it. Yeah, bring it? I think it's important. If things go south, we want Ignatius. Well, what do you guys think? Yeah. As Is... long as it keep it away from me. <laughs> I'm gonna be out there lying. Okay. I'll say uh, at least what, what's the radius of? Uh, uh, I think it's like 15 feet. Yeah. I'll stand back 16 feet. Okay. While as you prepare to head to El Diablo's to attend the poetry reading in the evening, I'm gonna have you all roll me a d6. Mm. Six. Five. Five. Ooh. Okay. This is some interesting luck in this case. As night settles and life phases down across campus, the darkness comes across and the lights in the university building are put out. You are leaving your offices, your classrooms, your campuses, and your rooms to go to the Posthumous Poets Society to attend the reading of More. sad poetry. Yep. Whereupon you then plan to break into the chemistry department. Is this correct? After, after the poetry reading. Okay. After will the poetry reading. Break into the chemistry department to investigate. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. Um, I've changed my look slightly. I'm still the same person, but I'm now wearing a black sweater vest and a black tie. Okay. And I have some eyeliner on. <laughs> but it's all physical. As, like you actually did this. You put the eyeliner on. As yeah. the coffee is distributed at El Diablo's, you realize that it is not, not coffee anymore, uh, but whiskey and gin that is in the mugs Ooh. that is being passed about as, uh, as a, a Veneer of smoke um, covers up the small cafe where the students have pushed together um, several crates to be an impromptu stage for their poetry readings. Um, several students have already read their, their poems. Um, and What's the theme? The, the, the theme of the night generally is um, many, of the, many of the students tell poems of stolen youth, oh. telling of how um, their dreams have been shattered, uh, that, um, that we Oops. we are the youth that speak the dream of a, the shatter, the broken dream of a shattered nation, a world of war and disappointment, a bleak dream of an uncertain future. <laughs> <laughs> and then lights down. <laughs> <laughs> Is it my turn to yes. read? I I walk up onto the stage dressed in my black sweater vest, and I light a cigarette and stand in the smoke. And I I, I look out upon the crowd and I go, but is it art? <laughs> and and then. I step forward and I go, I would like to discuss dreams 
and the despair within them. <laughs> this Wait, poem is called Dreams of Despair. <laughs> Purple haze, a chemical daze, a friend betrayed, and I look at Pluto. <laughs> a love delayed. I want to know what makes magic grow. A rock and a glow, darkness below. I dream of the dark with a light and a spark. I seek the truth of all missing youth. I've lost someone alone in the dark. I must find them now, somewhere, somehow. <laughs> And as you take a go to the cigarette, I'm like, you're going to ruin your lungs. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> if anybody would like to ask questions about my poem or if it invoked any feelings or secrets that you wish to bestow upon me, meet me tomorrow morning by the fountain and we will talk when I leave. Or I step off the stage. Do you have a stage name? No, like I'm just, you're, you're just, Mortimer? just Morty. Yeah, Morty. Okay. All right. As the poetry reading ends for the I night, feel, I feel targeted. <laughs> with the bit. with the applause of all, um, you see s several <laughs> students, including Elmo. Elmo just nods. I nodded him. He's in. <laughs> that really, that was really touching. I have a lot of uh, personal trauma to work through. Oh, nice. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, and the deceased and and the posthumous poets head off to oh. their their demizen as the the night finishes off mostly with our with poetic discussions, uh, more gin, and much more smoking. With that, with the scene continuing, apparently late into the evening, the three of you are able to slip away, largely unnoticed, to head across campus into the night. Are we, <clears throat> are we teleporting? Uh, yeah, or do we, do we want to go in just like, just go in, or do we want to try to teleport in? Because maybe we go in and teleport out. It's then, as you step outside, out onto... Hurdle, uh, Hurdle Road. Rudy, you see this. The m green is mostly empty. But you can hear the odd yelp of several students partying and whooping in the night. But you can see in the midst of the green are several strange figures. One hulking in size and its silhouette. You see the group of them. Give me a perception check. 19. There's a man, a student, and you see something slip up through the darkness. And several other figures. One of them is grabbing him. Grabbing the student? Yes. Uh, guys, we got a student being- One of the hulking figures. There's a massive hulking figure, two of them, sorry, two massive hulking figures with unnaturally extended limbs and one of them grabs what looks to be a, a, a young man, a young student and surrounding the hulking figures are several other humanoid figures carrying weapons and as they surround the man they there you hear you hear someone say, saying out what are you guys doing? 
Hey, no, hey, it's my buddy, no! Wait, what? Ah! He needs help! I, I, I'm... My best friend, Kristoff! <laughs> what? <laughs> and I'm gonna run in that direction. You run towards the, the screen. And run across the green. You run across the green, which is dark. It's pitch black. Um, for the most part. Like, Rudy, you have dark vision, correct? Yeah. So you were able to make out a little bit of this. Mm -hmm. You run across the green, and you see... And as you close the distance across the green, you see one of the hulking figures melt into the shadows of the night with its victim. And as you arrive, the other hulking figure and several of the others are still there. Well, you arrive as the other figures are still there. Getting closer to them with your dark vision, you see the creatures before you. At first, as you get closer, just to the edge of your dark vision, you think, you see, the smaller figures are armored in suits of full plate and carrying long swords and battle axes. It's only as one of the clouds darts across the night sky and allows a glimmer of the moon to bathe the green in moonlight that you see the armored plates have been riveted into flesh. Welded metal fused into muscle and sinew and bolted into bone. Globs of weeping and inflected fat flesh where scar tissue pulsates, where the body fights against strange glistening metal that the armor and weapons are made from. As the, as the creatures turn, each wears a helmet that covers their faces. And in the middle of the, the helmet, though, is completely enclosed, except for what would be a circular opening and within that circular opening is a faceted and cut delirium crystal, mm. glowing like a cyclopean eye in the otherwise nondescript helm that each of the figures wears. The helm coming down low enough where you see their jaws hanging out. Their jaws, their teeth are massive molars like as if someone placed the teeth of a farm animal in a human mouth mm. and you see the jaws clamp and bite and gnash and gurgle. The larger hulking form among them is swaddled in bloody leathers and cloths. Hulking in size, it too is helmeted in the same way as the others. It's human-sized head puny around the rest of the body around it. Though not as heavily armored as the others, its arms have been elongated as if someone sewed, like the arms look like someone has taken two pairs of arms, fused them together, and then put two more pairs of arms on the end and then made fingers out of forearms, such that the limbs are massive and extended and end in sharpened blades. Oh. These do don't you look do? like students. <laughs> <laughs> and, and Kristoff's just gone? As you approached, there were two of these hulking figures with the long limbs just as Rudy saw them, you heard the scream, 
and the hulking figure had given had grabbed the man. You're not. You're only assuming. Voice. Had grabbed the man and disappeared Just into disappeared. shadow, leaving behind the, the rest. But you can see that there is a rent hole in the earth that they have climbed up out of. We might need to change our investigation plans for the evening, friends. Are we still in disguise? Yes. Although it might be wearing off in the next... I mean, we can fight in disguise, or should we yeah. not? We can... Should we? Shouldn't we? I don't know. Uh, it might blow our cover. <clears throat> I drop seeming. Okay. That way, if somebody does see us, yeah, they'll just be like, who are these random people? Yeah. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Well, as you drop the disguise and head towards battle, unfortunately, that's where we got in for the night. I'm ready. I'm, I'm glad you brought Ignatius. Yeah. Yeah, I'm very glad I brought Ignatius. You didn't wear your armor, though. No. I have okay. a, I have my discus. <laughs> you have your shield, but no armor. Yeah. Okay, good to know. Well, we'll pick that up. At, uh, we'll come in hot next time with, uh, we haven't, we've been a little while since we've had a good fight, so we'll come in hot next time with lots of action. Mm-hmm. So, a big thank you to our cast, Jill, Kelly, and Joe for playing tonight. And a huge thank you to Kyle for all of his work behind the scenes. And, uh, yeah listening to my poetry. Thank you, Kyle. And a huge thank you to our Dungeon Master, Monty Martin, uh, for running these this schoolyard escapades. Shenanigans. Shenanigans. Schoolyard shenanigans, indeed. In our game tonight, we use a variety of incredible assets produced by talented artists. They have graciously given us permission to use them in our tabletop games, and we encourage you to go out and support some of these amazing creators. Uh, we have some... Uh, Music by Tabletop Audio, uh, player character artwork by Elizabeth Perot, miniatures by Hero Forge and WizKids, and some amazing uh, terrain by Dwarven Forge. Of course, don't forget to look at the links below for our Teespring store. You can find all of your favorite Dungeon Dudes shirts. Check out bit.ly slash Dungeon Dudes merch. Our videos and live streams are made possible because we have an incredible Patreon community supporting our work. If you enjoy what we do and what we create on YouTube, Twitch, with our live streams and regular episodes, please consider becoming a supporter of our channel by following the links in the description below. We also have a phenomenal Discord community exclusive for our patrons, so if you're joining us on Patreon, make sure to hop on to Discord, where you can chat with us about all things D&D, TTRPG, Drakenheim, anything else you want. You can also join in on our monthly writer's rooms and our Q&A and homebrew workshops as well on there. And of course, we got new videos dropping all the time on YouTube as well, where we cover all sorts of D&D related topics and much more. Be sure to join us next Tuesday when we broadcast the campaign on Twitch. You can check us out from 6 p.m. to 8 p.m. Eastern time at twitch.tv slash dungeon underscore dudes. You can find all the video episodes of the show on YouTube or check us out as an audio only podcast as well. Thank you so much for watching and we'll see you next time as we decide the fate of Drakenheim.